Hi guys, today I want to talk about automatic flow control valves. These are the TRVs that have got flow limiters built in, or what's known as pressure independent control valves. So what do we mean by pressure independent control valves? Let's say we've got four valves. Four valves on the same circuit. You can set these valves to allow a set flow rate through. And these valves will only allow that set flow rate through regardless of the pressure either side of the valve. So when you have a dynamic system, for example, when this valve turns off and that one turns off, you're still gonna get the same amount of flow through these two, or if all three turned off, and in any other combination. Now that is fantastic and very, very helpful, especially for system pumps, because they target and maintain pressure, which is great. However, boiler pumps are what's known as delta delta T pumps or burner linked pumps. They vary the pressure output depending on the speed required. So let's take an example of 28 kilowatts again because it's simple maths. If we said this pump was in a 28 kilowatt boiler, it would require 20 litres a minute to maintain delta T20 and that's what it's going to output. Let's say the load is also 28 kilowatts and each of these zones is 7 kilowatts. So seven kilowatts is gonna need five liters a minute. Now, this 28 kilowatts load is when it's minus two outside. So this, so far this will work. Five four times five is 20 liters a minute. However, when it's not minus two outside, when it's 11 degrees outside, the load is only 14 kilowatts. When the load's 14 kilowatts, the boiler pump is automatically going to run at 10 liters a minute. Provided you're using a combi boiler, system boiler, and modulating controls, which I think most of us are by now. So when this runs at 10 liters a minute, five liters a minute is gonna go down here, five liters a minute down here, and there's not gonna be a lot of flow left for these two. I mean, I don't think it will work out exactly like that, if I'm honest, but it's gonna work out something like that. In most of these valves, they have very small orifices, which actually gives them very high authority over the circuit. Valve authority is something we go into another video. But yeah, so that will go some way to contributing. But because they're pressure independent, they won't keep balance throughout the varying boiler speed throughout the year. Pressure dependent control valves, however, vary the amount of flow through each circuit, depending on the pressure differential. So as this boiler slows down and the pump slows down, the pressure differential across a circuit will automatically go down with it. And because the pressure differential across each control valve or lock shield to you and me, drops, the flow rate will drop. And that will stay in much better equilibrium throughout the year. Remember, most systems are only at minus two, less than 1% of the year. So for the majority of the year, it's gonna be unbalanced. What's more is, when this is a 14 kilowatt load, this zone is only gonna require two and a half liters a minute. So what you'll end up here is, too much flow in this zone, too much flow in that zone, not enough, not enough. With pressure dependent control valves, it will stay more balanced throughout the year. Now that's not to say they don't have their place. Anytime you're using a system pump or any pressure modulating pump, these are literally perfect, the best valves you can get. So I'm not trying to discredit them. Again, I'm just trying to say they have their place. And I'd also just like to say, this is just my understanding. If something special is happening here that I'm unaware of. Please mention it in the comment section below. I'll look into it and I'll do another video. One argument against this is that the TRVs will shut down and start to rebalance this system anyway. If that is the case, then you may as well use normal TRVs. But in saying that, if you're using modulating controls, your TRV should not be your thermostat. It should be more of a temperature limiter. If you start restricting flow and turning off all radiators and using one radiator to heat the house, that radiator is going to have to heat a lot hotter to get the heat out. Unless you're in a bedroom or something like that where you actually want the room cooler. Okay guys, thanks again. If you appreciate the value you're given, please click on the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing a ton more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.